on in, everyone. I'm really, really excited about this next session. Um, and I'm going to introduce in a second Marsha Friedman um, coming from, to us from the States. And she's got so much really great information, the stuff that I love to hear about, which is really about building your business um, to brand yourself as an expert. I mean, how cool is that, right? So we've learned so much so far. Again, let's recap where we've been so I can keep everyone on track. We started with Danielle, who brought in the um, understanding your desires and where you want to be. And then Janet came to us and talked about branding. And then I talked to you about actually putting in your calendar. Anastasia talked about really great ideas and things to implement. So we're there, right? We've got all this great information. You've got your organized, your company's ready to go. And now we have to figure out how to tell people you're out there, right? Because how many of us are entrepreneurs that sit at home and we're like, shh, I kind of got a business, but I'm not really sure if anyone knows about it. <laughs> and it's, it's, it, I really, really like what I'm doing. I don't make very much money, but I love, I love working with all the people. How many of you have had that conversation with yourselves? <laughs> Maybe it's time we're going to get rid of that conversation today? Yes. OK, so let me put my old glasses on. Marsha Friedman, she has been there. She's been there as a wife and soulmate for almost 40 years. As a mother of four, she's been there through the celebration of life and the tragedy of death. In business as in life, Marsha Friedman has truly been there. For the past 23 years, Marsha has been at the helm of one of the most successful boutique PR firms in the US. As the founder and CEO of EMSI Public Relations, she is highly respected, widely regarded as an innovator, a pioneer in the PR pay for performance model. Marsha, Marsha's body of work speaks for itself and throughout her career, she has mentored, advised, and worked with a long and impressive list of political luminaries, celebrities, and executives. So, Marsha Friedman. Thank you. OK. Well, thank you, Faye, for a wonderful introduction. And also, thank you so much for inviting me to be with you here today. I have to tell you, the energy in this room is incredible. So. My hat's off to Lee and Faye and for everybody who's really created this incredible environment. I used to put on meetings so I know how difficult it can be. Anyway, I love nothing more than being able to share with people the incredible information that I've learned in 23 years of working in the PR world, working with some very incredible people, some famous ones, but mostly not so famous. Mostly professionals, doctors, lawyers, entrepreneurs, CEOs, people like you, like me, who really just understand the value, the importance of building yourself as a celebrity, as an expert celebrity, building your brand as an expert in your field. These are the people that I love working with. And this has really been my business for 23 years. And as a result of it, I wrote the book, Celebritize Yourself, which is Really, it's a three-step method, and it's basically the tactics and strategies that I've learned over the years working with my clients. So what I want to do with you today is kind of walk you through the three steps, okay? But also, I'm going to focus on something, one of the more difficult steps in the journey. It's actually one of the beginning steps. It was very difficult for me when I actually sat down to do it myself, but we're going to cover that ground as well. You know, before I start, let me ask a question of you ladies. How many here by raise of hands, are you are doing what you love to do? Wow, that's great. Well done to you. That's really cool. Another question. How many of you here are interested, kind of like Faye said, in moving out of that, you know, that very comfortable zone of not telling too many people, but how many of you here are interested in really raising the bar and really becoming well-known, building your brand as an expert in your field, the go-to person. How many of you are interested in that? Oh, I love it. I'm so excited to hear that. Because you know what? My goal 
Today, I've got 45 minutes, I'm going to talk fast, but I want to be able to give you some really practical information that you can apply to your life, take home today, and, and actually work on creating that brand, building that brand. So let's start with step one in the three-step method. Yes, write a book. Now, I've talked to some of you ladies, I know some of you are actually in the process of writing a book, which is great. Some of you have said to me, oh no, I'm not a writer, I can't do that, or there's so many books out there on my topic. Well, you know what? There is no better marketing vehicle than you can have than writing a book, and we'll go into why. But the most important thing is, you know, in the process of writing a book, and for those of you who've actually started it, you can attest to this, it's a very tangible way to really define your message and who you are. More importantly, having a book is kind of like an admission ticket to the media. It opens the door to the media. Why? Because they're interested in providing expert information to their audience. That's how they make their money, advertising rates. The, more, the bigger their audience, the more they can charge. So you now become a resource for the media, right? Let's look at some examples of people who've done that really well that you would know. How many here saw the movie Julia Child's life story? I forget the name of the movie, Julia Child. Yeah, okay, the famous, the famous, uh, you know, a food analyst. The, she wrote a book. She, if you watch the movie, it was really big in the U.S., but it was a few years ago, maybe before some of your time. What did she love? She loved two things. She loved French cooking, and she loved James, her husband, but probably in that order, you know? <laughs> but here's the deal. She loved French cooking so much, somehow she got a big contract with a traditional publisher. I forget if it was Simon & Schuster or Random House. But it was just a passion of hers. She went on to become a best-selling author, millions of books, and then she wrote more books, and then she did her TV show. And guess what? We have her today to be thankful for the Food Network. And I'm addicted to it, but that's what Julia Child did for all of us. Here's, she started with a book, though. That's my point. Here's another one. How many of you are familiar with Susie Orman? Everybody knows Susie Orman, right? Okay, well, here's a woman. She started as a stockbroker, but she didn't want to just be a stockbroker. She really wanted to go to the top of her game. She wrote a book. She went out. She started doing speaking gigs. She wrote more books. She got her own radio show. She got her own TV show. Now she's a household name, right? She started with a book, ladies. Another person, Rachel Ray. This is my last example. I just want you to get the point. Rachel Ray, she started as a sales clerk in a gourmet food store. She was smart enough to go pitch the local TV network on doing a uh, segment where she could do a cooking segment focusing on some of the products that are in her store so she could drive consumers to the store and buy the products. Well, they loved her. They invited her back. She wrote a book published by a good friend of mine. She went on, she published more books, then she had her cooking show, then she had her talk show. She started with her book, okay? There's just tons of examples of this, of why a book is so critical, and how it opens the door to the media. But here's the thing, I know it sounds very daunting, but I promise you, it's really not. You know, five years ago, when I was on stage talking about, you need to write a book, the landscape was so different. It was much more difficult than it is today. But there's a whole industry out there, ladies, called ghostwriters. How many of you are familiar with ghostwriters? OK? That's how, you know, when you go into a bookstore and you see these books on the shelf that are written by doctors and lawyers and fitness coaches and uh, chefs, you name it, guess what? They had a ghostwriter working with them, the majority of them or they had a collaborator. So that's how you get it done. And it's not anything that you should be embarrassed about because it's your ideas. You're just giving your ideas to a professional writer so they can put it in a book form and that's what they're professional at. How do you find them? My recommendation, and take this down because I really want you all to write a book, go to guru.com, G-U-R-U.com. Go to Elance, E-L-A-N-C-E.com. You post your project, tell them what you want. You want a book, what the book is about. You can even tell them how much you want to pay for it. 
And what's going to happen is you're going to be barraged with writers who are interested in working for you. So then it's going to be up to you to kind of go through and find that one person where there's actually a synergy there. They know your topic. They're interested in it. But ladies, that's the way to get it done. Because even if you are a writer, I'm a writer, but I needed a ghostwriter. Not because I don't write, but hey, guess what? I've never written a book, number one. Number two, I don't have the time. I'm running a company. I don't have the time to sit and do it. I mean, I had to do a lot of the groundwork, and you will too, but that's why you need a professional working with you. They know how to actually create the chapters and have it all flow correctly and make you look good because that book represents you. So, okay, ladies, you've got your book, right? Now you've got to get it published. This is where publishing industry has changed so much. I'm not telling you go out and try to get a literary agent or get a contract with Simon & Schuster, not at all. Today, there's something out there called independent publishers. And, you know, quite frankly, they've been out there for years. Um, you, they're, they're a publishing company, so you go and you pay them. You pay them to edit. You pay them to do the book cover, the front, the back, to write the copy, and to print the book. So they're out there, and they have gotten very affordable because the competition is incredible. Where I recommend people do, and what I, you know, I, I think is a great way to go, is actually through print-on-demand publisher. I use and recommend CreateSpace. That's createspace.com. And guess what? CreateSpace is owned by Amazon. So who better to publish your book than to have Amazon behind you, right? And you just, you can, it's kind of like going to a Chinese restaurant and ordering, you know, from the different menu, whatever the service is that you meet. And you may not need an editor. You may not need a cover designer. But you can, you can choose to have all of those services. It's not expensive. The beautiful part of it, though, is that you can order one book or you can order 10,000 books, and they're all going to be the same price. You know, in the old days, we used to have to uh, kind of order the 5,000 books, and we'd store them in our garage and pray that somehow we were going to get rid of them. And more likely than not, we didn't. So today, you don't have to do that. You're going to a speaking engagement. There's going to be a few hundred people there. Order the book. It gets shipped right from CreateSpace. That's all you have to do, ladies. So in terms of marketing, there is nothing better than having a book. I can't impress this on you enough. Let's talk a little bit about this celebritized quiz. By the way, there's a little quiz that I had put together in the process of writing the book. And I have copies of it at my booth. You can pick it up. And it's a list of questions that you want to ask yourself as you're going through this journey. Now, what I want to focus on is just one of the questions that people struggle with the most because it's the, it's the, it's the point about defining and crafting your unique message. And I'm going to tell you my story a little bit about that because that's kind of how I figured out this journey, figured out this process, right? So here I am in the PR business. Whenever anybody calls me up and asks, you know, about our services, if they don't have a book, usually I tell them, particularly if they're a professional, hey, write a book. Or this is the advice I give at, uh, you know, when I'm talking to groups, write a book. Well, at about 17 year point in my business, it got to be embarrassing because I didn't have a book. Right? And here I am telling everybody else to go write a book. And I thought, ah, crap, excuse my language. I got to write a book. So I put it on my calendar as they suggested, and <laughs> there I was. I think it was a Sunday night, sitting in front of my computer, and I'm all excited. I'm going to write a book. Because in my mind, I'm thinking, hey, slam dunk. I can do this in my sleep. I'll write a book about how to get publicity. This is what I do day in, day out, right? Wrong. I sat in front of that computer, and I dreaded it. I wanted to be any place else but in front of that computer, you know, with curled up with a favorite book or in a movie theater watching a great show or with my husband or my kids or my gr any place but being in front of that computer. Why? There were two reasons. Number one, I was really bored with the whole topic. I mean, this is what I do. So to sit and write about it, it was really boring to me. But then, as I'm sitting there trying to write it, I thought, well, there's so many books out there on PR. What the heck am I going to say that's going to be different than what's already out there? Okay, well, that started to get the wheels going. I realized, hey, Marsha, you've got to come up with something different, something unique. I mean, after all, this is going to represent you. It's got to be really good. 
So I started to kind of look at, all right, how am I going to know what's different about me? I mean, I know me, but I don't know everybody else. I don't know what their book is. Okay, then maybe I got to drill it down more. I had the idea. You know what? Maybe if I figure, what am I passionate about? Because I figure whatever it is that I'm passionate about, guess what? That's unique to me. That's me. That's, that's at the core of who I am. And so I sat there and I thought, all right, well, what am I passionate about? I mean, I know I kind of love my work. And I asked you all, do you, are you all doing things that you love to do? You all, you know, the majority of you said yes. Well, you know what? I love what I do, but I sure didn't love what I do 8, 10, 12 hours a day that I'm at the office. I really don't. I love parts of what I do. So I kind of had to hone in on, all right, well, what are the parts about what I do that I really love? And I realized, you know, for me, I'm kind of this Jewish yinta kind of girl, OK? <laughs> so you ask me a question, or you tell me anything. You know, you tell me about your husband, your wife, your kids, your business. I'm immediately thinking, oh, but if you did this, then it's going to be better. Or if you tell me about your business, I'm going to go, oh my god, you need to do this, you need to do that, whether you ask me or not. That's just how I think, right? So I figured, OK, that's, what's, that's, that's me. That's what I'm passionate about. And that really became the theme for me of my book and crafting my own message. So I want to walk you through the five steps that I came up with that I want you to apply in figuring out what's your unique message. And you know what, ladies, even if you're not going to write a book, it's so critical that you identify what's different about you. How are you different from your competition? Because when you've identified that, you're going to be able to stand above the crowd. So let's get started. Step one, what I did. What message are you enthusiastic about? But what do you do? What part of what you do really excites you? What part of what you do gets you up in the morning and really gets you going? You got to nail that. Let me tell you a, a, a quick funny story. I was on a plane going to Colorado, and I figured, oh, great time to write my book. By the way, when I travel, I'm so not interested in starting up a conversation with the people next to me. It's nothing, I love people. It's nothing to do with that, right? But it's like all day long, I'm on the phone talking to people. This is my one private time. I just want to be able to read, to write, to plan, to think. I don't want to talk to people. So here I am on the plane. I'm writing my book. And here's this guy sitting next to me. And he's looking over my shoulder. Got to be really annoying after a point. And he's just reading everything I'm writing. And he was just kind of very overtly kind of looking over my shoulder like that. So I'm trying to hide what I'm writing, right? I'm figuring maybe he'll get the hint. No, not. So finally, after a while, I thought, okay, that's it. I'm going to confront this. Hey, buddy, how can I help you? Just right in his face, smack dab. So he looks at me and he says, well, I noticed you're writing something. I said, right, very smart. Yes, I'm writing a book. It's a marketing and PR book. So what do you do for a living? I thought, all right, I'm in the game. Let me go for it. So he tells me, well, I'm a financial planner. I'm on my way to Colorado to a marketing seminar where I'm supposed to be learning how to market my business. And uh, I said, oh, cool. Well, OK. Well, my book is about how to market your business, right? <laughs> As if he didn't know, because he was reading all my notes the whole time. <laughs> so he says, well, well, what's it about? Tell me. And I said, well, the first thing I tell people is write a book. And he looks at me and he says, I'm not a writer. He was almost annoyed. I'm not a writer. I'm a financial planner. I said, no, I know. I got it. And then I walked him through the whole ghostwriting thing. Hey, buddy, you don't have to write it. You get a ghostwriter. OK, he was fine with that. The next thing is, he said, but, but there's so many books out there about financial planning. Why am I going to write a book? What's going to be different? What, what do I have to say? And I thought, you know, that's the point. It's not about you. This isn't about. This is about having a marketing vehicle. You want to have, you're going to this marketing convention to figure out how to market yourself. And guess what? If you have a book, you're going to be light years ahead of a lot of your competition. So you have to figure out what's your unique message, right? I went through this whole process. And I'm asking him questions. And he's not getting it. He's really thick. He was almost like stubborn, like, I'm going to prove you wrong, lady, right? I'm not going to come up with something unique. So we go back and forth on this. And I thought, all right, Marsha, I'm not giving up on this sucker. I'm going to stick with him till I get it. It was, became a real challenge. So finally, after all this back and forth, I finally looked at him and I said, OK, so 
do you read for your profession? You know, like newsletters, books? He said, well, of course I do. I said, OK, good. Tell me, what's the reading material that's on your table at night? What are you reading at night? So he tells me, well, I read about IRAs. I mean, I really enjoy talking to baby boomers who are about to retire and what to do with their IRA. Well, he started going on and on <laughs> about having baby boomers. And I'm like, oh my god, the light finally dawned. You could feel his energy. He started getting enthusiastic and to whatever degree he was capable, passionate, okay? And I'm like, there you go. That's your book, buddy. So he was really excited. He said to me, okay, you're right. I think I might have gotten more from this plane ride than I did from the convention. And I'm thinking, I know you did. <laughs> actually, he called me about a month or two later and actually told me he did. So that's, it isn't difficult. It may sound like it's easy, but you really have to do some introspection.